Very quickly, uh, session meets today. Please be in prayer for our session, our church. Uh, very quickly, uh, Frank lost his sister this week. Condolences to Frank. I guess he's still out here. I don't see him back there. But y'all keep Frank lifted up. Keith and Dot lost their sister-in-law. That funeral's coming up. Be in prayer for Keith and Dot as they travel and uh, minister to that family. If you know of anyone that's in the hospital, going to be in the hospital, please let the church office know. Call the office. Leave us a message. We've got a team to make those visits. Uh, Miss Miles is home now. We're not sure how she's doing, but we'll get that follow-up this week. So thank you for those answered prayers. We've got a team of people that are taking care of that ministry and hospital visitation. And uh, appreciate the way you as church are stepping up. Just a reminder that our picnic is August the 16th, 5.30 to 7.30. Where is that? Legion Park, old school. We've got a shelter rented, and we're going to be in the water park with the kids, maybe, if that's still going. I'm sure it'll still be open. All right, that's exciting. On the back of your bulletin, uh, we're not having Christmas in July, but we're going to still have our Christmas prayer box starting at the end of the month. Be gathering those thoughts, prayer requests, and praises be delivered to the box on July Sunday to July the 30th. Our Christmas box will be back. In August, we're going to make a big deal on August the 13th, as, and we're calling it Blessing Sunday. And you can read all about that. We've done it in the past. It's been a couple years, maybe because of COVID and whatnot, but uh, we're bringing that back. And if you have uh, some information for Jan or Donna as far as a charity, that we can collect uh, donations for. Let them know that. Anything else? I've covered it all. We need. We don't have acolytes today. Okay. Well, let us be church. <laughs> so, Doc just told me something that is still resonating in me that's kind of I'm thinking, ooh, I gotta chew on that for all day maybe, that in the word where it says, be still and know that I'm God, the original Hebrew really means, let go, let go and, and know, know that I'm God. God. How freeing is that? That is amazing. So I'm gonna let that marinate a little bit. So as we're singing our first song, Victory in Jesus, that song lends itself to let go and know that I'm God. Let's stand and sing.
seated. <coughs> morning. Good morning. Our uh, invocation is Psalm 64, 1. Hear my voice, O God, in my prayers, preserve my life, from fear of the enemy. Would you pray with me, please? Loving Father, we thank you, Lord, that you're always walking with us, helping us, guiding us, protecting us. Father, we pray, Lord, that you will strengthen us through this life our emotions, our, our walk with you. And, Father, that the words we say, the things we do, are always pleasing in your sight. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I just want to take a few minutes and say thank you. This last week was awesome. Um, one of my, I'm going to bring all the teachers, everybody up here in just a few minutes, but I just want to take a minute and share with you guys. Thursday night, we're closing up, and I, I see some of the kids, you know, getting up, and their parents are telling them, you know, come on, and we're talking about the pool party and stuff, and I had one of the boys to come up and ask me, what time's tomorrow night and what's supper? I said, well, tomorrow night's the pool party. It's not VBS. What do you mean? VBS is over. He said, but I had so much fun. I want to keep coming back. That melted my heart. Not because of me, but because of every one of you. And the love you shared this last week to the kids, whether it be through your teaching, whether it be through the crafts, the music, the food, or just your warm body being here helping them. These kids were touched by it, and they felt that. And I just want to say thank you. A couple of weeks ago, I was struggling. I had no teachers. I had nothing. <laughs> I didn't know what we were going to do. And within a week, I had everything filled. And that's because you guys felt that calling to share your love for these kids. And that means a world to not just me, but them. So, that's enough of my, my tangent. Okay, um, if you helped with VBS, I'm going to ask you to please stand. And it doesn't matter what your position was. If it was in the kitchen, if it was in the crafts, if it was picking up or helping to decorate, anything at all, please give these folks a round of applause because they were awesome. If you were my, y'all can be seated now, um, 
my preschool class. This consisted of kids ages three all the way, I think we had seven-year-olds in there. Um, this was preschool, kindergarten, first grade. If you were in that class, please come up here, teachers included. Right. So, here you go. Uh, no. <laughs> you all get to share about your week with Jill. Well, I had to leave because my mom was sick. But, oh my goodness, I have seven grandsons. And it was so much fun to have all of these ladies. Now, I have one. Boy, listen, where is he? Oh, oh, Paxton. They gave us, we just had the best time. What did you like to do best? Um, I like to do crafts. Oh, yes. <laughs> Wasn't he awesome? We had awesome help. All right, um, what was your favorite thing to do? Hello. Say hello. Say hello. Playing with Neely. Uh, <laughs> playing with your friends. That is absolutely the most wonderful thing that you could do. And uh, what did Miss Gretchen make that you all like to play with? Settle. Yeah, you know. You can't have anything without homemade, smell good play -Doh. Yeah. And I would, oh, and who did we learn about? Who was that man? Sucky Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on up here. We need to. And then, uh, how, hey, how come I thought of uh, the nativity scene with David Jesus and Joseph and Mary? What did we talk about? Oh, come on up. This was my main man <laughs> right here. And sometimes, by the time we got to music, he was pooped out. Don't you? Oh. <laughs> that's, hey, you know what? That's how my grandboys look at me sometimes. Did you have fun? Yeah. yeah. What was your favorite thing? What lesson did we do that you had the best time? That is, uh, when Jesus. What did Jesus do when they came in? They put him on a donkey. On a donkey, yeah. And what did they cover all over the street? Uh -huh. Palm trees. Oh, they did palm leaves, didn't they? Yeah. Palm trees. Yeah. Yeah, but they were awesome. We had the best time. I didn't know I was going to have to talk. <laughs> um, well, we started out the first day with like seven, and then we exploded to 12. <clears throat> um, I wasn't sure about this age group, being with this age group, um, but it was truly a blessing. Um, they had so much fun. We were all exhausted every night, um, but it was a lot of fun, and... It's so great to watch them grow and learn about Jesus. I don't think anybody was much fun. I had really much, I had a really fun. Uh, I have really fun. No, okay. How about you? Uh, well, 
why I say it all. Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, kiddos, I'm going to stretch them. Will you all sit like on this front pew with them somewhere up and through here? And then after the others come up, we'll let the kids do their songs. So our next group was um, second through fourth grade. Haley was the teacher. She's not here. Miss Diana, will you come up here with them? They're supposed to come up here too, so, yeah. You normally had a bigger class than this too. Here you go. You too. Well, I was only here two nights, first and last, struck by a virus. So Haley was the one that was in charge. And there were six people both nights I was here, and I think seven one night. So we had a good time. They were an excellent group, especially during singing time. Is that correct, Mandy? Yeah. <laughs> Boy, Kevin, come in. <laughs> Have a good time. Have any special memories you want to share? Okay. <laughs> they, they aren't as forthcoming as these little ones, but it was, a, it was a very good week. For the two nights I was here, I totally enjoyed it. Y'all can join the others over here for a second. And then our next class was what we called the middle school, um, our fifth grade all the way up through eighth grade, and that was Miss Joy and Cherie. So if you all will come up with your class. I think this is the quietest I've seen them all week. So I'm trying to think how many we had, eight, nine some nights, um, and then we would have a few that would kind of fall out here and there. Um, but we had our, we were kind of lopsided for a while. We had a lot of boys, um, and we would have like one or two girls come in, um, and they were they were they were pretty good most of the week. A couple of times we had they were rowdiness, but they were doing good. Can you think of anything that you want to say or that you learned this week? <laughs> I didn't notice Bob. I liked playing outside. Yeah. <laughs> that was probably their favorite. They liked to go outside, and that was the end of the night, actually, so they had to wait until the end to play games. We did. We had a couple of uh, boys in the neighborhood that actually joined in. Uh, they were out walking around, and they came and joined in, and they started coming every night. So that was a good blessing. The, the kids played with them, and they joined in just like they were a part of our youth group. And, um, and I hope that was a blessing to them as well. I like the song. One of the things that's, that stuck out to me is, um, as a teacher, it's, it's different when you're the one actually putting the lessons together and then how much you think your children are going to get out of it as they're expressing what they learned for the night. But every time we went to crafts and David would ask them about it, I was always impressed of how much they knew. <laughs> so, um, and I had two occasions where I would ask, you know, in the, at the end of the lesson if they wanted to pray, and I had two volunteers, which is, is rare for your youth to stand up and say they want to pray at the end of, end of it. So I think they did an awesome job. Hope you had a great week. Um, we did have an adult class, and so I will not make you all come up here. I won't put you through that. Um, I will, if Terry wants to ex say anything in a little bit about that, I'll give him that opportunity also um, as he taught the class this last week. So the kids, every night, they had, what we have, Candy? Close to seven songs. 
each night that they worked on. Some they did several times through the week, some were completely new each night, but um, every time I was down the hallway, I could hear the laughter and the dancing going on. These kids had an absolute blast with it. So I'm going to turn this over to Candy and Leanne, and they're going to let the kids share a couple of the songs that they learned this week with you all. I wanted to say one thing. We had a boy, uh, he goes to uh, Newton Parish, and he is from Afghanistan. And he loves, loves to play. And even though, you know, we were making a difference, from, he did not speak English uh, a year ago. And now he's fluent. And uh, so we made a difference uh, to a boy uh, from another country.
I think we should have the kids back up and sing that song again as a congregation. <laughs> that was awesome. Let's sing one more hymn of praise to the Lord, if you would stand with Yes. God, I think we should give a big round of applause to our leaders. Yes. Thank you, Angel, for all that you did and do. <laughs> okay, let's stand and sing. I'm ready to go, man. <laughs> uh, we're taking up an offering, I guess. <laughs> Is somebody supposed to bless the offering or somebody? <coughs>
Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to be in your house today, Lord, and please be with Brother Terry as he uh, delivers your message to us. Father, we ask that uh, you take these offerings and tithes and multiply them for your uh, kingdom and use us as those vessels. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning. I guess I should have read the bulletin more closely. I saw some papers in the offering plate, so I thought, well, I guess they've already taken up the offering, or people have already brought it up, so that's why I come up here. And I forgot Tom was going to sing. You come on and sing, brother. Huh? All right. All right, for our sermon this morning, we'll be in the book of Psalms, Psalm 34, 1 through 3, and we'll see how far along that we get on this All right, now we're ready. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. Pray, Lord, that your word will enter into our hearts and into our minds. Pray that we can live out your word. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalms 34, 1 through 3. You know, I've been saved uh, since I was 29, I'm 64, so uh, the Lord has blessed me many, many ways, and when you think of blessings, or bless, you think about the blessings that God has given you, and we could all stand up and share how much God has helped us and blessed us in so many ways. But I was reading this particular psalm, and it says David wrote this psalm whenever uh, he was in some trouble and, and some people run him out of town, basically. Uh, of course, da uh, King Saul was an enemy of David. He tried to kill him. He was jealous of uh, David because David uh, went to war and had all kinds of victories in, in war. And, of course, David is the one that killed Goliath. So David have a, had a reputation, and Saul was jealous. So David went to this one country, and I can't pronounce the name of the person that was the king of that particular country but he was going to kill David and David stood at the gate of, of the village there I guess and he started foaming at the mouth and he started acting like a madman and so the king of that country said I'll oh, just let him go we're not going to do anything to him he's crazy he's a crazy man so they did they let they let David go and this is where David wrote this psalm, was right after he left this camp. And there was a group of people with him. But he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. 
Have you ever thought about that you and I can bless the Lord? You know, we, we think about Jesus, God blessing us, but have you ever thought about we can bless him? You ever thought about that? Well, the word of God tells us The Word of God tells us several ways that we can bless Him. These children up here that we're singing, you know what they were doing? They were blessing God. They were laughing and smiles on their faces. God's looking down, receiving their blessings, I'll guarantee you. So we can bless the Lord, and I have never, ever thought of it that way. As long as I've been saved, I have never thought that I could bless him. Now, he can bless us, and we talk about that, but we can be a blessing to God, and I'll show you how. Well, we bless the Lord with our mouth, first of all. When we pray and when we sing, the word blessed actually means to kneel. That's the... uh, that's the interpretation of bless, is to kneel down and an act of adoration. I would like to read several scriptures concerning our words and what the Lord says about it. James 3, 8 through 11 says, But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly, evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God with our mouths, with our tongue. Even the Father, and therewith, you see, therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we man, which are made after the stimulitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doeth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter. James is talking about how we, cut, how we could cut each other down, talk about one another, uh, slander someone else. He's saying we should not do that. He's saying we should bless God with our tongue. As long as you're blessing God with your tongue and lifting up the name of Jesus, you shouldn't have any time to talk about other people. Your mind should be on him. Then in Matthew 12, 33 through 37, Jesus was talking to the scribes and Pharisees. Jesus' words, he said, Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, The mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. These are the words from Jesus. He said, But I say unto you that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So Jesus is saying our words make a difference. What we say to others makes a difference. I need another table over here. We'll do that for now. Just for now. Romans 10, 8 through 10. This translation is from 
The Way Bible. That's the name of the Bible, The Way Bible. Uh, my uncle, on my 16th at Christmas, I was 16 years old, and my uncle gave me this Bible for Christmas. And I thought, you know, I didn't want a Bible. You know, 16 years old, I wanted something else. Uh, some kind of toy or something. Or some clothes. But I got this Bible and I still have it. I don't know how I've kept it all through these years of going places and doing things. But I've kept this Bible. In the Way Bible translation it says, Believe and tell others for salvation that comes from trust in Christ, which is what we preach is already within easy reach of each of us. In fact, it is as near as our own hearts and mouth. That Jesus Christ is your Lord, we need to tell others, that Jesus Christ is your Lord and believe in your own heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. When we bless the Lord with our words and what we say, uh, we will begin to see God's presence everywhere when we start blessing him with our words. And we'll see his bountiful hand in everything that we do. Blessing the Lord also reminds us that he is keeping a watchful eye on us as we bless him, just like parents Loving parents watches over his precious child. It is a reminder that we are under his constant care if we're praising him and worshiping him and, and uh, giving him everything. How do we praise him? With our mouth. Do you ever wake up in the morning and uh, this just opened my eyes to how we can be a blessing to him with our mouth. You could say, God, you hold the whole world in your hands. God, you are very great. God, you are blessed. I magnify you, Lord. Let us exalt the name of Jesus. God, you are clothed with splendor and majesty. You start blessing him. Bless you, God, for this good land. Bless you, God, for America. Bless your holy name. Bless you, God, for your son, Jesus. We exalt you above all things. When we bless God with those type of words, I don't know, I just got, whew, I feel good just, just doing that. I got chills. Because we can bless him. And how great thou art. You can tell God how great thou art. You are the king of the universe. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Now that's a song that we sing. But in your prayer time, when your prayer time with the Lord, bless him with these words. Tell him how great he is. Tell him how marvelous his works are and everything he's done in our lives. Uh, this just opened my eyes. In Psalms, uh, Psalm 34, 4 through 6. This is David. He said, I sought the Lord and he answered me.
and he delivered me from all my fears. David was blessing the Lord, exalting God's name, and God delivered him from all his fears. And he can do the same for every one of us. He can deliver us from our fears. But we have to seek him. We have to seek the Lord, and he will deliver you from anything, any habit, any, uh, anything in your heart. He can deliver you from that. And set you free. And it's good to be free. I know about being free. And it's the best feeling. God can set you free. Um, in 2 Timothy 1 through 7, it reads, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. That's what... Uh, Paul wrote to Timothy, God has not given us the spirit of fear. In verse 6 says, if you're reading along with me, verse 6 says, This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him from all his troubles. I was poor one time in spirit, and every other way poor. But whenever I uh, called out to the Lord Jesus Christ, he saved me from all my troubles. Gave, my, gave me my family back. Delivered me from every abuse I was doing. And he can do the same for anyone. If he can do it for me, he can do it for anyone. He can save you from all his troubles. And David was in trouble at that time. He was running for his life. All right. Now let's continue reading. And at this point, I really, at this point right here, I really just didn't feel the need to study over every verse that I was looking at here but I decided that I would just read these verses. They're self-explanatory. Uh, that's why I'm just going to read them, because you hear the Word of God, and you'll understand everything that I'm reading. I'm going to start in verse 7 and finish with verse 22. Joe, if you can put that up there as I read, I appreciate it. If you, if you can't, that's all right. We've got Bibles in the pews. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him with all inspired reverence and worship him with obedience. So when we, that's, that's not a fear of God's going to take a big stick and hit you over the head if you do something wrong. That's just a fear of reverence to the Lord because he is all things. says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord, our God, is good. How blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord God is good. He is good to us. And how can anybody, I think my translation is a little different, but we know that the Lord loves us. Come and taste and see the Lord, that he is good. His ways are good. He says, come and see. Oh, fear the Lord, you, his saints. For to those who fear him, there is no want. No want of anything. All we need is Jesus. The young lions lack food and grow hungry, but they who seek the Lord will not lack any good thing. Why wouldn't anybody want to follow Jesus? 
as good as he is. We, and that's up to us to tell others. To te- and that's one way we can bless the Lord. Use our mouth to tell others about his plan of salvation. He says, uh, Come, ye children, listen to me. I will teach you to fear the Lord with all inspired reverence and worship him with obedience. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? This goes, this goes with the sermon I preached a couple weeks ago. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Hate evil, love the good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous. Those with moral courage and spiritual integrity and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off their memory of them from the earth. That's going to happen one day. One day all evil will be gone. When the righteous cry, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their distress and troubles. The Lord is near to the broken heart. And he saves those who are crushed in spirit, contrite in heart, truly sorry for their sin. God is always there for you. If you are truly sorry for your sins, God is there for you. He hears your cry. He won't turn you away. Many hardships and perplexing circumstances confront the righteous. But the Lord rescues him from them all. He keeps all the bones, not one of them is broken. Evil will cause the death of the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be held guilty and will be desolate. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who take refuge in him will be desolate. Now that word desolate, it means that you're lost, miserable, wretched, hopeless, inconsolable. And if you're with Jesus, you won't be desolate. Without him, without Jesus, you will be. No one who trusts in the Lord will be desolate. This trust, this believing in Christ, his death on the cross, his burial, and his resurrection, if you believe Jesus is alive, you can actually pray a prayer like this. And if you'd like to pray, pray this prayer today, you can. It's be the best day of your life if you do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. And if there's anyone here in this building that does not know you, that has never experienced being able to bless God because they don't know you, Heavenly Father, they could pray a prayer like this. Heavenly Father, I am sorry for my sins. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I believe in your death on the cross, resurrection, and you're alive now. I ask you to come in my heart and save me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer today, you are saved and in the kingdom of God. Amen. I'm done. (laughs) I don't know what else to say next. I think that was pretty awesome. Thank you.
Let's stand and sing, and let's just affirm what Brother Terry, what Brother Terry has said in his message to us with this song. been a great week, Vacation Bible School. Thank you again. My blessing in charge for dismissal today is hold the rope, David. We need some volunteers to help put the pulpit back at the end of the service. My blessing in charge today is hold the rope. Look around. Those that you don't see, bless Jesus by touching base. Invite them back to church. We're, we're still church. Let's go out this week and do something that's pleasing in His eye. And all God's people said, Amen.